morning. How are you doing today? Mm. <laughs> Hello, my name is Michael, and uh, once again, I am still trucking through the Gospel of Luke. I know, I know, I know. Don't press that button. Don't X out. There's uh, goodness in store. We're going to be looking at uh, chapter 18 today, verses 1 through 8, real small bit. Jesus told his disciples a parable about the necessity for them to pray always without becoming weary. He said there was a judge in a certain town who neither feared God nor respected any human being. And a widow in that town used to come to him and say, Render a just decision for me against my adversary. For a long time the judge was unwilling, but... Eventually, he thought, well, it is true that I neither fear God nor respect any human being. Because this widow keeps bothering me, I shall deliver a just decision for her, lest she finally comes and strikes me. The Lord said, pay attention to what the dishonest judge says. Will not God then secure the rights of his chosen ones who call him out day and night? Will he be slow to answer them? But I tell you, he will see to it that justice is done for them speedily. But when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Now it is classic for me to, when I read this, um, to fall back on. I was like, oh, you got to pray because even if a dishonest judge finally breaks down, God, who is good, is going to answer your prayer. And... Then the next following typical line is to say, God always answers our prayers. He just doesn't answer them the way we want him to. And we need to pay attention to how he answers these prayers so that we can understand God and, and, and see the glory and the goodness in how he answers them. Because God always does things for a greater good. And that's all true. But when I, re when I looked at this today, there was a line that, that, that stuck out to me. He said, I, sh I shall, for a long time the judge was unwilling, but eventually he thought, while well, it is true that I neither fear God or respect any human being, because this widow keeps bothering me, I shall deliver a just decision for her. And for some reason this morning, what popped into my head Yes, it is important to pray con constantly and always. And so the question with that is, is like, well, how do we pray constantly? And one way to pray constantly is to offer things up. Uh, Lord, the next two hours of, I'm lucky. I have a job where every two hours I get to take a, a break. So I, I could go to work and I could say, God, these next two hours of work, I want to offer up for such and such or for this or for that. May something be remedied. May this person find peace. May, you know, this person find a job. May, you know, so you may I have something, you know, whatever. And so then as you go about those next two hours of work, you can treat those two hours of work as a prayer, offering it up to God, working for God. And it's not just work. It, it could be housework. It could be study. It could be, I'm going to go to church today. And worship, I want to offer this up as a prayer for this specific reason. Myriads of ways that you can pray other than sitting in a quiet room by yourself with no one watching, praying deeply and incessantly to your Lord or praying by reading the Bible. Just so many different ways to pray. What struck me, though, was is that our lives while being a constant prayer, have the opportunity to win hearts and minds. And even cold-hearted judges may be turned to maybe take a look at this Jesus guy or God, and it opens a bit. You have the ability to be the face of Jesus, the face of God. I have this ability. And while I am a broken human being who sins daily, and I, even though I try, and I, and I'm like God, help me out with this, because I'm a, I'm a wreck, I'm a hot mess. 
in that pursuit, we have the ability to show Jesus to people who have not met him yet in two different ways. One, in, in our actions. There are those, there is a, there is a famous quote uh, saying, um, you know, always preach the gospel and sometimes use words. I think in this day and age, we could actually use words a little bit more. That's just me. I, I, I am no expert. I, I have a fault on that myself, which is in part why I do this, because it's easier to, to sit in this dark room and look at this little green light and share with anyone who may come across this video and take the time to press play. It's a way for me to share the gospel than it is to just walk up to some stranger. It's easier for me to wear a t-shirt or a cap to remind myself to be Christian and maybe open the eyes of someone else. But the fact is, is I'm opening my life up in small ways to share the gospel. But to also then to start speaking about the gospel. There are, listen, God made you amazing. You are beautiful, you are strong, and you are talented. God is so mysterious and you are his favorite. God is so amazing that you can be his favorite. And the common reply is, well, he says that to everybody. Yes, he does. But it doesn't change the fact that it's true. I heard that several years back, and I really like that line. But it is true. You are God's favorite, and so is everyone else. But because he is God, and God is who he is, he can love you uniquely to you. You're not a face in the mass of Christians or in the mass of humanity, wherever you may be on your faith journey. He loves you uniquely and specially because you are unique and special. And he wants to love everyone else that way. And he wants to reach out to everyone else through you. And you don't have to do all the heavy lifting. God will. All you have to do is make yourself available and open your heart. Because everyone has a hole in their heart. Right? Everyone feels incomplete. And some people turn to exercise. Some people turn to sport. Some people turn to music. Some people turn to, you know, financial gain or business or whatever. There's there's fashion. There's so many different things that people can pour themselves into. And those things are good because they are a part of God. But when those things become our God, we become unsatisfied and enough is never enough. Everyone has a God-size hole in their heart. It's just unfortunately we try to fill it with the wrong things. So how is this going to change my Saturday reading this? I'm going to try to be better at praying constantly and offering everything up. And through that praying constantly, I open my heart and God can come in and God can change me and make me a better person. And then as I walk around, not perfect, but a better person because of God's influence and I allow God's influence to take me over, then I can shine more brightly to others who may be a bit more lost than myself today. And maybe, just maybe, I can lead them to God through this life of prayer and living this life of Christianity. And they can feel his love and they can feel special. Because there's so many lost. And it's a shame because you are all so beautiful. I don't know. That's all I gotta say about that.